if we're looking for a core issue it, overall and trying to find a starting place to deal with this, could we look at inclusive governments or the lack thereof and the security that goes with that inclusive governance as that starting point? It, is this all realistic with the nation state model that they have in the Middle East right now? Or if there is a plan B or a C or a D, should we think through with the region balkanization to some extent? Thank you. So take your pick. There I'm, I'm just going to go. I'm going to give you a 30 second answer. We, we, are, we are sort of in a post, uh, you know, Picot, Picot era right now. I mean, there is going to be a new Middle East by the end of this decade. And it is going to look different. There is going to be a different shape to it. There's going to be a different dynamic, and there's going to be a lot of conflict to get there. Whether or not we are participating in it uh, in, a, in a major way again or not remains to be seen. I, I'm not going to you know, predict that. That's a big headline. Do you, all agree, do you both agree with that, that we, the international boundaries of the Middle East will be changed fundamentally in the next decade and it will not be They already have been, absolutely. And, and the United States is... is naively hubristic if we think that we can recreate Iraq simply because we want to. The Iraqis themselves have to want to, and I'm not at all convinced that Iraq exists right now. I mean, I think you have the Kurds, you have the Sunnis, you have the Shia, and, and we're trying to look back towards 2003 and see Iraq the way we wanted to rebuild it. But that's water under the bridge now. It's up to the Iraqis, and again, this, this two-sided perspective that the United States is going to go in there and shape what's happening in Iraq is, is not realistic. Yeah, tribes matter. I mean, I hate to, you know, an ambassador for God, you're, you, you live this, but tribes matter. They don't care about, you know, governance at the at a, in some central location. I mean, in many cases, they don't. And and I think that's what we're beginning. To me, I I feel like that's a part of what we are seeing sort of rising back up. First, to answer your question, um, inclusive government's an ideal, um, and there are a few success stories. Morocco has a government of both secularists and Islamists. Um, the king is still there, and the king is still very influential, but he's brought Islamists in. The prime minister of Morocco, who does the day-to-day -day stuff, is an Islamist. Uh, Morocco is one. Tunisia uh, just had both parliamentary and presidential elections, and a secularist beat Islamists. The first time I've ever seen Islamists lose a free and fair election in an Arab country. That was quite interesting. But they'll probably end up also with an inclusive government that combines both. So I'm, I'm mildly optimistic about Iraq. Uh, they've made some progress. They have a long, long, long way to go. But I don't hear a lot of Iraqis demanding the breakup of their state. I don't even hear it from Kurds. I hear Kurds kind of talking about it like, Watch out, we might be independent. Um, but that sort of sounds to me almost like, you know, the Baltimore Orioles saying, watch out, we might, you know, try to hire uh, one of the best New York Yankee players, knowing that we can't afford a salary. So, um, uh, I'll tell you what is, I think, where, where uh, General Flynn, Mike might be right, is I, it's very hard for me to see how Syria is ever going to be put back together. Uh, it is, uh, there's just been a lot of blood. Uh, and then Yemen is another failed state, and I don't know exactly where that's going to go. So I can imagine that some of the, the borders may change, Michelle, but uh, it's not preordained that the entire state system in the region is going to collapse. Rather, I think we'll have some places where it's under greater strain than others, and this is a case where individual leaders and their personalities really matters. The difference between the current prime minister of Iraq, Haider al-Abadi, and how he's able to work with Kurds and work with many of the Sunnis, and his predecessor, Nur al-Maliki, is night and day. If only we had not supported Nur al-Maliki back in 2010, but we did, we did. Um, and this maybe gets to Audrey's point, you know, we be careful that we think we can control this because a lot of times we like insist on one particular individual, we have a really low batting average on that kind of thing. 